Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode um, 355. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, answer the questions asked on the uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of um, wasaweb.net. Um, he's uh, based in London, in the suburb of Wimbledon. Um, you can find Masataki. He's also a Google product expert, I should say, um, on uh, the AdSense community. Tim Kappa uh, is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. He's a, a Google product expert uh, in uh, the Google My Business community. And Tim is based in the UK also, as, as well as Masataki. Um, Tim is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. And we might be joined shortly by uh, Michael fisher Kirsch and maybe even... Uh, uh, David Rose. All right, so let's have a look at our um, first question tonight. Uh, it's from Chris Green. Um, he's um, saying um, preventing cannibalization between pay per click and search engine optimization or um, organic ranking. Um, Chris said, Hi guys, we want to prevent. Uh, cannibalization from occurring between uh, pay-per-click and SEO. Um, however, always have pay-per-click on when the competition are bidding on a keyword. Is there any automat automated way to uh, um, do this? For example, let's say there is only one paid search ad for a keyword. And you also have to, uh, you also have the top organic result. Then let's say a competitor moves into the mix. I want to be notified when this happens automatically. Uh, is this possible, or is the only way to do this uh, manually? Nobody um, um, on, on this. Um, I really don't have a, a lot of notes uh, on, on this, but um, it, it, it's, 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 it, it is an issue, um, particularly when Google allows um, your competitor um, to bid on um, your, your, you know, your, your copyrighted um, uh, your 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 brand, um, and um, yeah, I think it's just terribly wrong. But there, there is a, if if you uh, are being uh, um, undermined in that way, uh, there there is a way that you can do it uh, once you uh, um, register your brand uh, um, as a trademark. Um, and and uh, you can approach Google and, and have uh, your brand keyword uh, from um, being uh, used by competitors. That's the only thought that doesn't answer Chris's um, question. Do, do you guys have anything to add? No. Okay. Well, let's go um, to the next. Uh, this one from Sorab Rowat. Um, will it improve SEO if I delete poor quality pages? Or, um, he said, I have some poor quality pages but don't, that don't have any organic traffic and no plan to update them. If I delete them, is it helping to improve overall, overall website trust slash reputation slash authority slash ranking? Kind of depends. Um, oh, can 
kind of uh, yeah really depends um uh, so um I'm working through a site now that goes back to God, when did they start publishing stuff? 2010, something like that. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm removing a lot of, you know, uh, crap pages. Um, is it benefiting it? I can't quite tell because of course, I'm not just going to sit and remove poor quality and only do that to test it right <laughs> um i think you need to decide on what's when you what is your poor quality does it benefit a user um it's like you got to you, you you really got to look at the page and think okay so it hasn't had any traffic in a couple of years but then you look at where it's positioned and it's like on page five however it makes sense and it is good quality in the sense of if a user was navigating through the site or did land on it they would find the information they needed it's just it's not ranking so it's not showing any traffic so therefore you think it's poor quality i think the question to you would be what is it does it add value to the user if they landed on it or moved to, or came through to that page. So, you know, without, it's such a massive question without any details that I can't give you a specific answer. But those are the things I think you, you need to look at. Yeah, I think it's a question of priority, isn't it? You know, should you think in terms of will something improve SEO or do you think does this page serve a purpose? Perhaps it may not appear in search results, you may not be having that many visitors, but does that page meet the needs of visitors or not? I think that would be the question I'd be asking myself rather than saying, ooh, will this improve SEO? And he adds, I think, that there are only 150 pages in his site so in that sense i'm not i don't think removing poor quality pages um, would improve seo as such given the size of his site and if it's if it's a poor quality page there's a poor quality page and if you don't want to have it any longer remove it by all means but you're going to remove it because there's a good reason for doing so yeah 150 pages is not going to move anything Okay, all right, that's number two out of the way. We have nine more. Um, this one from Chris Green again. Um, he wants to stop a page from appearing as, as a site link. Um, by site link, he means, um, you know, um, those um, um, listings are on a search engine uh, results page, uh, which go directly to a, a category here. Uh, um in a, a site um anyway uh, chris green went on to say hi guys i want to stop a page from appearing as a site link on organic results is the best way to do this uh is to add a no index tag uh, to that page well it's a bit extreme, but unfortunately, um, you can't demote anymore in Search Console. Um, <laughs> the thing is, with those site links, you know, how do you know index it? How long? This is the thing. How do you? How long do you know index it for? Will it coming out of the actual index eventually? Yeah, you know it. Yeah, it's um, it's quite extreme just to remove it out of a site link. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. 
I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, uh, like, is it an about page or, or something like that? Um, is it getting traffic? Can you can you move people through with better click, with better calls to action on that page? Because the no index thing is like it's just yeah. I, I mean, I, I would try not to use it if I could, just to get it out of out of a site link. And who's to say when you eventually you reinclude that it doesn't come back? This is the thing. Hmm. Yeah, and, and also um, uh, one of the reasons that, that he'd be wanting to get rid of it might be a seasonal site link, like um, um, say Valentine's Day, and, and uh, um, he doesn't want it on his site all all, the, all along. But I, I think users are savvy to um, um, what a site link looks like and and, and understand um, that. Um, you know, the seasonal site links are, you know, wrong or out of date. Um, one thing is that it's very, very hard to get a site link. And uh, um, once you know index it, of course, you, you're probably not going to get it back again. All right, uh, will we move on to the next? Okay, it's... This one from Jacob Henderson. It's question four on our run list. Naming conventions for an e-commerce website. Now, there's an interesting question. Um, Jacob said, um, thanks for accepting my invitation here. You're welcome. Uh, he said, I've got a question about category naming conventions for an e-commerce website. Um, for the sake of an example, I will uh, use screwdrivers as hypothetical category name here. If I have multi-nested screwdriver categories, for example, flathead screwdrivers, Phillips screwdrivers, decorative screwdrivers, etc., is there a negative impact on PageRank to have the top level screwdriver category to be titled um, all screwdrivers, prefixed with the word all, or would it be better just to title this top level category screwdrivers? For me, I favour Randy Ray's uh, answer. No, it shouldn't hurt anything to have the word all in the title tag. Sam suggesting that humans might think it was stilted, but I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if that's the thing. I must say that, though, that, that we thank people like Sam and uh, uh, Ray and Michael uh, Stricker, Michael uh, Martinez, uh, all those people who answer questions on site, people like Tim Kappa, who not only answers questions uh, on our Facebook group, he answers them uh, here every week um, on uh, our uh, um, weekly hangout, uh, review hangouts. Um, yeah, I, I, we, we thank um, Tim and, and all of the other people for their invaluable contribution. All right, let's move on to the next. This one is question five. Chris Green is giving us a hammering tonight. Um, a Google Analytics goal for an e-commerce site. Chris said, hi, guys. When a client says they want to set up Google Analytics goal funnels for an e-commerce site, is the best thing to do uh, is it to set up enhanced uh, e-commerce tracking? Um, yes, um, certainly worth doing that. Um, it'll give you some more detail. Um, yes, um, I'm just trying to try to try to go a bit deeper with this. <laughs> I think the answer, as David Kutcher has, has said, is yes. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll um, there's probably more to this um, question, but um, Chris, um, uh, that's all we have this week. Um, number six on our run list is from another one from Saurabh Arawat. 
Um, he said, which of these are ranking factors for Google? We generally try to discourage questions like this. Nobody knows what the ranking factors are. We can guess, um, but um, nobody knows what are ranking factors and uh, in what order or what the order of importance. Um, but anyway, Saurabh asked, um, can anyone please tell me which one is, is a ranking factor? One, author name. Uh, two, um, author bio. Three, author page. Four, author reputation. Five, author social media reputation. Well, I'd like mm -hmm. to it down. None of the above. Yeah, none of the above, that's it. <laughs> um, yes, none of those above. Um. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm being very succinct this week. Uh, no, no waffling. Just, just yes and no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's go to number seven on our own list. Um, number seven is another one from Chris Green, and I'd like to thank you guys for your enthusiasm. Um, Google published changes to our Google My Business Hours. Um, he said, hi, guys. Um, Google published changes to our Google My Business Hours without our approval um, in the dashboard, even though the listing is verified. Are there um, any methods to keep uh, Google from publishing unapproved suggestions from the public or a third-party source? And he, uh, in, in the um, WCA questions yeah. Facebook group, you can see a photo. Yeah, so the first thing is when you say these change, um, the first thing I would look at is you, you, you may or may not have given access already. Um, and one of the biggest things that comes back uh, <laughs> when, when I escalate these is that um, they've actually given access to, to the particular site. Uh, you know where it says sign in? and you sign in with a Google account, and then that is attached to, um, you know, that account is also for your GMB, well, you've just given them access. Um, so that's the first thing. Check access that you have granted to anyone. Remove access that you have granted inadvertently to anyone. The next one is take those hours that it keeps being changed to, and just do a quick, quick, you know, um, quick search, find, you know, see where, um, see where it's being pulled from. The reason being is that 90% of the time, if a suggested edit is made or it is independently updated by Google, um, they are finding that information somewhere, right? If you typically do a suggest edit from the public and Google cannot verify that and Google can quite easily verify it. Those hours are on your site. Those hours are on, you know, uh, most of, you know, any of the citations out there that you have. They typically do not uh, instate them. They will, they will send you an email saying suggested edit has been made and to double check it. They don't approve it, right? You approve that. You approve or deny it. If it's automatically approving it, that information is somewhere. They believe, or Google's algos believe that to be correct. Okay? So those are the two, two things that you really need to look at. Secondly, or, or thirdly, if you can't, if none of those two actually exist, next time it happens, drop me a screenshot of your dashboard, a link to your GMB listing, and I can ask them to see who the malicious nut job is um, and uh, see if they can put a block on that. Excellent, Tim. Thank you um, for that kind offer. All right, let's move on to the next. It is question eight uh, on our run list. Um, it's from Ross Raffin. Uh, he said, has anyone recently tried a resource link building? Um, 
He said, has anyone recently tried resource link building with any success? If so, um, what kind of response rate are you generally getting? Um, resource page link building is the practice of building backlinks from pages that have curated lists of links to external websites, resource pages. Um, I don't think it, ma it matters. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, look, I had to, I had to, I had to Google what it is. <laughs> I had to Google what this was. Right? Yeah. Look, yeah, man. If I create resource for a client, or you know, there's something being created somewhere, and um, there are resources that you know that 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 work well with the product or the business or whatever, and you link to them, that's fair and well. Um, do you know what? I've never, and I've been doing this, and I've been doing that. This is not a new thing. I've been typically been building our resources. Oh, uh, I don't know, 10, 11 years. I've never, and of course, all the backlink builders out there will be like, well, no, I've never, I've, I've never gone out and emailed and said, hey, I included you in my art, in, in my resource. Like, how's about a link back? I'm like, what? No, I just, I'm creating a resource. I created for the user. Typically, when you create a really good resource, you position one anyway for that, right? Uh, and if you've targeted well enough, you you know, you, you there we go. There's your traffic. There's your brand building, right? Um, I've never thought, well, yes, you know, it's in like, like the link building thing. But no, you know, I build it for, for the traffic and things like that. Um, I don't know. No, so I mean, I, I can't say I've, I've tried it. I build resources. I've never then gone out and say, hello, I've built a resource. I've linked to you. Can you link back to me? No. Well, would you, would you even build a reply? You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even reply, would you? No, because I, I mean, I freaking get them like, I don't know, 10 a week. Oh, you know, you've got this brilliant article and I've got this other resource and it'll be great and I'm a fuck off. <laughs> I get about 10 of them a day. I know, it's bollocks, man, it's bollocks. Yeah. So based upon our experience of what we reply to, Ross, I would say your response rate may be about 0.05% chance. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. Um, Listen, Ross, if you're going to build a resource, right, build something that's freaking awesome, that ranks by itself, drives traffic, um, what more could you want? Exactly. All right, we're moving on to number nine on our run list. It's from Philip Rinaldi. He said, I have a feeling that the page has been penalised. Uh-oh. Uh, Philip said, hi, SEO gurus. I'm looking for some insight and help on a current ranking issue with a page and was wondering if anyone could spot the issue here. I'm trying to rank for the keyword small business um, loans. I have a page that was once ranking on page three, then slowly started moving higher. Now it is not in the top 100 results for the past few months. Oddly, the page ranked at the top of uh, page two for the singular version of the keyword, small business loan. However, it is not now uh, in the top 100 results for this version either. It gives a link, um, which I'm not going to try and repeat. You'll see it in the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. He said, we have made efforts to add more content to the page and we have optimised around this keyword. Also building backlinks. I have a feeling that the page has been penalised uh, if it's not uh, even able to rank in the top 100. Google Search Console uh, shows no penalties and the page is indexed for other keywords, but not many. I'm prepared to change the URL structure to remove the repetitive business lens keyword that may be causing a penalty 
and do a content overhaul. Just not sure if there's something else that I'm missing. I've been in SEO for 11 years, so please feel free to get technical uh, to help me solve this. Uh, thank you for your help. Mm, so I only saw this one today, and uh, to be honest, I did chuck it through SEMrush, and I got sidetracked, mate. I didn't bother. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, what I did know when I chucked it into Sem, uh, SEMrush, the overall site, you know, over the last year, you've 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 really made some 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 increases. Um, but if I'm, I'm trying to remember back correctly, um, it's only been around about a year or maybe two, or, or I don't know if it's a year, beginning of January, 2019, and actually started even doing anything. Um, and you've made some significant gains in that year. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, like, uh, especially over the last Mm, four months, man. There have been like pages which I've had on clients which have been there for years, have taken like drops overnight and then come back. So I don't know what your time frame is here. Um, I'm just trying to remember on small business loans. I don't think I saw small business loans in the actual. Sorry, mate, because I was you know, obviously, you know, we're working. Um, but I did see, you know, you have got incidentals building up, and I think it was small business loans for women recently came into the top top eight pages. Um, so I think I think things are going all right. I would maybe just relook at some of your off the top of my head, if something like that's happened, I would just look at my internal linking to that page. And I may have cocked something up, or there may be a, another page called Small Business Loans within the URL uh, that you've got content wise somewhere that is cannibalizing the two are fighting against each other. I would, I would certainly check that. Uh, I think this question only came on today. So to be honest, I really just haven't had the time to chuck stuff in. And have a look at it but off the top of my head if it was there it's pissed off one we could be looking at algo two i would have a look at some cannibalization issue that would be my that would be my initial go-to to double check it my only thought apart from or on top of what uh, tim has said is have you optimized the hell out of it in trying to get it to um, get it to rank again? Um, I'd uh, if if you've been really sticking the the keywords in it, I would wonder whether you've optimized the hell out of it. Um, but otherwise, Tim Tim's suggestions are eminently sensible. Okay, I think that's number nine covered. Let's have a look at number 10 on our run list. It's from Vidra Kex. Um, Vidra asked the question, it's preparing a strategy um, for an S a search engine opt optimization campaign. Uh, Vidra said, does anyone have any good tips on how to prepare an SEO strategy uh, to present? Um, what to include? I prepared um, traffic volumes um, for uh, each regional site um, based on the focused keywords, like an estimate of how much a traffic will or slash should increase. I will prepare a list of topics um, um, uh, our site should cover together with the main terms, then also a few tips on how to improve the site, including content optimization, improving user experience, and similar. Uh, any other useful tips? Thanks. Nobody answered on our um, 
Well, no, this question only came up today, um, but nobody has answered so far on uh, our um, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. I'd uh, run it through a, um, an audit tool and get a feel for how the, the thing is working technically, um, see if there's anything obviously wrong with it, um, because I like to have, have the site uh, working properly before I start uh, working on content. Um, so, yeah, I would put some kind of uh, technical overview into that. Yep. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, um, I'm just trying to think. She did put, like, she was looking at topics, keywords. Uh, I would certainly look at questions. I'd look at, you know, also break it down into, you know, resources that you can you can build. Um, I don't know what the site is. Would it be copy? Would it be uh, video? You know, look at look at how you can. Obviously, you got your topic. Split the topic down into various things, depending on what the site is. Can you? Yeah, I would really break that down. The other thing is that I don't know if you're doing this for a client or someone else, and I'd be fairly careful in looking at where you're getting your keyword versus traffic. If you start putting that into things that go to a client and you start showing them like you've you've broken down all these kind of keywords although that's not some of them may not you may not even be relevant in terms of what's going to be built onto the site or whatever and you start chucking in potential keywords uh one thing i've got to just caution you there on is <laughs> a lot of these will say let's just say for argument's sake it'll say a thousand a month right and that, well, that's obviously per month your traffic volume so whether you get it from Ad, you know, ads or uh, adwords or a lot of things will all, all be estimates. And let's say it's a thousand per month. Just bear in mind that that would be in theory if you were on position one. Okay. <clears throat> but position one typically only gets roughly 33% of those estimated thousand you know, estimated thousand or, or searches per month. And then it breaks down and uh, I can't remember where it is, but literally, so even if you're a position one, you're not going to hit a thousand, right? There would be different variations and things like that where, you know, you could think, um, and there could be a lot more traffic because if you're building out your, your whole campaign um, and, and your resources, but I would just urge you to be realistic with the keywords and be careful in chucking in all these keywords that may not even be relevant at the minute, the client sees all these freaking potentials in terms of traffic. And a year down the line, when you've built all that resource out, you're only getting 40% of that estimated total that you were doing. And so I would just be realistic in those numbers. And I would put little asterisks and, you know, these are based on position one, Bearing in mind that position one in nowadays, you know, you're looking at only about 30 or 33% of that traffic uh, of that max volume because position two gets a percentage and three and four. Yeah. So it's just a word of caution there. Thank you, Tim. All right. This last question is uh, Tim Kepper's name. Uh, uh, written all over it. Um, it's from JL Faveria. Um, it's titled Deleting Local Google My Business Listings. Um, and JL Faveria went on to ask or say uh, uh, he's got a client buying up small businesses in the same niche and it's trying to delete their local Google My Business listings without success for several weeks. Um, any tips on how to delete them, or do you recommend another strategy? The strategy. 
So you're going to have an issue here. Um, <laughs> you can't delete, if those have reviews, um, there's pretty much no way you can delete that. So let's say you go in, you claim it, or even, you know, you should be, uh, you should have had it in your contract that the, you know, the, the login details for the business listing are passed over to you um, uh, on completion of sale. Um, but very few people, very few people do that. So, but let's say you've got access uh, and you hit delete. If that business has got reviews, there is no way it will delete. If you delete out of your dashboard, you purely remove your access from it um, and it will just um, stay there. Um, your other option then is to, if you're buying them, um, I, I, don't, you know, I don't know if he's closing it. Uh, did he say he's closing them down or he's buying them? He's buying them and uh, wants to uh, close down the pages. He's, he's going to run the company. Right. Okay. So if they if they are if there's reviews, there's no way of removing it. Google will will not, will not ditch that because they believe that's a user experience. They would rather have you place it permanently closed. Permanently closed personally doesn't look great. Um. You could either, I don't know what URLs those places have or phone numbers or how the whole thing works. There's a, there's a number of ways you could do it. So let's assume, I don't know, I don't know if he's buying 10, but let's say five don't have reviews. You should pretty easily be able to just delete those, okay? Those should be deleted um, unless they've got a massive uh, online presence, like let's say whoever had them before built out, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 citations for each, then there's a possibility they may not be deleted because Google understands the business is there. They can find other sources, references for it. Um, and then in that case, they would rather have it as permanently closed, which is a better user experience. Um, but let's just assume some have got, boom, you can get rid of five, gone. The others, there's, I mean, I don't know like what the business is doing. You could you could change the business name to theirs, to yours. Um, and then once you've changed that, you could change the uh, URL. Um, you could hit it up as a service area business because I'm assuming you're not buying the property. I don't know. If you're buying the property, well, you know, I'm guessing you're rebranding it. There's a whole lot of questions here. Um, if you're not doing either of that, I guess you could try um, going out as a service area business because therefore it's not a, a, a change of URL. Um, if you're not doing either of that, you literally just want to shut them down uh, because it's no longer relevant or anything. Uh, before you hit this permanently close, um, you could change the URL, create an actual landing page on the, his site with the previous brand name of that, or, you know, if it's blah, blah, blah. Um, so, because you'll be surprised if, even if it says permanently closed, I've got, you know, um, I have in the forums, there are people that get like you know, on a permanently closed business that was quite popular. They'd be like, please, can somebody get rid of my phone number? Because I'm closed, I still get 50 phone calls a day or 20 emails a day or blah, blah, blah. So the point being is before you hit to this closed, you could change the number. <laughs> or you could create a landing page based on that business's name on your site. Therefore, uh, change the URL before your market is closed. It goes to that page. It explains it's closed but you are the new owners of something similar, blah, blah, blah. You bought out, I don't know, the client, whatever. And then you keep it through that way. So without really knowing, you know, it's a bit too simple to just say, oh, we're buying and close. I want to close it. Um, you'll, you'll have to just see exactly what uh, is. So there's a number of options. 
But if there are reviews, there's no way you'll be able to get rid of it, unfortunately. Uh, over time, you know, Google says, Google GMB says, oh, over time, as people stop searching and clicking onto it and blah, 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 and we realize it's closed. It's, but I've had situations where people still have a permanently closed popping up that took over the shop almost 15, 20 years ago, and it's still freaking showing up. So it's like, at what point does Google, you know, that support will tell you, oh, it'll eventually drop off. Yeah, uh, I'm not entirely sure on that. But it's it's a bit of a catch-22, you know. Um, if there's reviews, they definitely won't remove. It's it's a pain, I know. But Yeah, so, so, so many times, so often... Uh, um, the, the intersection between Google and awesomeness is just a myth. Anyway, all right, let's uh, have a look at our, oh no, it's that time again. Um, I'm fairly sure when I click this. Yes, it is. It's thank you for watching time. I'd like to thank, um, before we go, um, all of the people who answer the questions on the Dumb SEO questions. Facebook group who, who, who answer those questions through the week. And especially I'd like to thank uh, uh, our, our revered uh, panellists, David Rosem, uh, Tim Kapper, uh, Masataki Wasa, um, Micah fisher Kirshner when uh, he can get here, Richard Hearn uh, when he can get here. Um, um, Looks like, is this the end of the, the this, this is the last one for the year, isn't it? Um, oh, no, uh, there must be another one next week on the 27th, day after Boxing Day. Anyway, we'll be back um, next week. Um, do, will I have a panel uh, to uh, ask next week? Um, not from me, you won't. <laughs> okay. Mm, I don't know yet, Jim. If some, okay. some, you know, gorgeous creature sweeps me off my feet, wants to take me somewhere on the 27th, you know, I'd have to, you know, it'd be a toss up between dumb SEO questions and, and, you know, being swept off my feet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to put it at 50 50 at the minute, Jim. It would be a tough one, but I'm, I'm going to put it down. <laughs> Dumb it, dumb it, uh, question, so I'll put it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we'll we, 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 um, have Tim, so uh, uh, Masataki will possibly be here. Um, we'll see. All right. Um, anyway, thank you for being here tonight, guys, and um, we'll be back uh, at the same time next week with a cast of um uh, possible possi possibilities all right uh, let's uh, see if i can turn this thing off there we are